This is The Sin Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and we are back once again today for a live review of Forza Motorsport 7. I'm kind of picking up where we left off yesterday. We did a lot of single-player testing. We tested out the feeling of the car. We made some adjustments to the sim. We got it where we were pretty comfortable in having a good time, and then we tried a variety of cars and tracks just to get a sensation of what the driving experience side of Forza was. We got the sights. We got the sounds. We got to see the car modeling, the incredible graphics, and all that good stuff. Today I want to go a little bit deeper into the sim or game, and I want to actually get into the career mode and even test some multiplayer racing. So at this point, it is available for everybody to be playing, so it's a good time to do the multiplayer, because had I done it yesterday, I'd have been all alone. So we will be able to really see what it's made of in that respect, and that's what we're here to do today. So, let's go ahead and remove our image. That is what we're doing today, our career mode and multiplayer, and we are going to go ahead and just get right back into the game. Now... I have to make some adjustments. This one's a little different, just like yesterday. Gosh, I'm having trouble getting it. Let me get it out of... Forgive me here. The windowed mode is always a problem. Also, I did hear... And let's go ahead and test that first before we get down to business. I heard that you can do triple screen. I am using a Thrustmaster TSXW steering wheel. Comes with the three PA, T3PA pedals. So, uh, those are, that's the setup I'm using today. I'll probably change that out next time I run some, just to try it with a different wheel combo. But, getting to graphics, I heard, and we'll see if it works or not, is that you can actually go to native, I heard. Um, native window resolution. Let's see what happens here. The full version of the game seems to be better than the demo, just in all fairness. Um, no, I still am running into windowed mode, but I have to in order to make OBS work for the stream. So, my circumstances doing it on the stream with you guys are always slightly different, and that's something that I'd have to test uh, on my own. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and... Uh, actually, I want to do one more thing, just because we can. We did win some driver gear, so rather than just be a totally you stock the track. setting, You'll unlock more we will change our gear. Or from prize and crates. see if we have anything we like here. Ooh, we get the VIP pack. Ew, Ken Block. I didn't mean ew quite like that. I'm more of a unique guy. I like the gl glowing green. That works for me. Um, so we'll enter that, and now we'll get down to business. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get into the Forza Cup. 3440 by 1440. So how Adapt wide out ability. did that work for you on your... Only the prepared will be able to cope Are you on running in triple screens, or...? Cup legend Yukio Takagi is renowned for remaining focused, even during a downpour. Oh, that's too bad, Francis, that you can't get past the main screen. I did have a lockup or two. I'm hoping that they they have a patch that resolves that very quickly for some people. Thank you, Crazy Dan. We've been having a lot of fun with that. I'm just going to stick with single screen for right now, it looks like, because that actually works best for you guys. And it looks like we are locked into this intro. Um, Maxime, that's something I'm going to try tomorrow when I try to go to a... Ooh, look, triple screen. All I did was went to native. I didn't give it a selection. And it went to triple screen. Whoa, I didn't want to pause. So, uh, this is the real deal. We're under the race. This is the first part of career mode. Um, I didn't even get a chance to really see what car they're putting us in. Obviously, the first race is in the rain. That should make it interesting. AI having trouble with the rain. You can see that. I've had some, both some good and bad experience with the AI, to be honest with you. Um, 
you do seem to make a lot of mistakes in patterns. Got a little hydroplane off that puddle. Not quite as scary as the Project Cars 2 hydroplane. It's definitely slipperier in the rain. Yeah, it's sort of like an extra wide variation, I'm assuming. But it is playing in triples, and it looks a little more spectacular. The There isn't too much distortion. Whoa, we really got loose there. There isn't too much distortion on the center screen, so when I'm behind cars, they don't look too stretched out. great first event for our career road, but let's just take it how it comes, you know? Driving in the rain, we could have stacked it. Yeah, this definitely looks better. I'm happier. Makes me really enjoy the fact that I'm playing it on the PC, not on the Xbox. I can't quite see this braking zone on this version of Suzuka. You know, we talk uh, Simcade versus Arcade, I think is the argument we're now having on this. 11th, oh, so it's only a one lapper. In all honesty, I don't know if I have my NVIDIA surround on right now. Um, I jump back and forth out of that stuff so often, and half the time I have it wrong. Um, but that's part of now what I'm doing when I'm jumping from win. game to game as Speed, often as I do. versatility, and adaptability. Now, it's up to you. You're about to take part in the premier contest in all of racing. The Forza Drivers' Cup draws only the best. Yeah, it'll be a challenge. But when you lift that trophy, everyone will know you're the world's greatest driver. Yes, you hear that? Now, again, I'm, I'm doing this not just to show you the career mode. You could go play this for yourself. The point of me doing these shows like this is to show you how I, as a reviewer, look at it. We've already established from yesterday's driving that it falls somewhere between an arcade and a simcade title. Now, for me... I need to get in the mindset of a typical buyer, typical client or customer of somebody looking for something that arcade to simcade range. And that's when I look at things like fun factor. And that fun factor has to be through the roof when you get into that category versus when you look at something, I'll just use iRacing as the example. iRacing might be the driest sim, the, the least amount of fun factor involved, and yet maybe it's even the highest level of competition sim. So. That gives you, you know, but when I met an arcade title, I want this career mode to really suck me in and, and, and inspire me to license up, inspire me to try a broader spectrum of cars. And that's when I'm looking at career mode, how I'll be really looking at this, just so you know. Welcome to the Seeker Championship. Now each series is based on more than 50 car divisions featuring different types of vehicles. So it's time to make a choice. Which series will you choose first? I think it's very similar in handling to Forza 6. Similar. It's changed. It's been enhanced. Uh, it's going to be guilty of the same types of behavior. So the things you loved about it, you might love a little more. And the things you disliked about it are going to be very similar. Uh, that, that's kind of the way I'm experiencing it right now. So it looks like it gives us a few different areas that we can go into under this license so we have six categories we can run and then we have looks like four that are locked out from us right now so hot hatch trophy trucks we haven't done any dirt yet this is something they kind of brought in from horizon if you really think about it one is on me so go ahead and pick what you want every truck maker says their vehicle is tough but none of them hold a candle to these beasts with massive engines and sturdy suspension, 
These trucks bring the jumps and noise of the Baja 1000 and the Dakar Rally to a stadium show near you. What does toggle do? Okay, that gives us uh, specs on it. If we hit R for toggle. Um, so we have a selection to choose from. We can go with the Traxxas Rockstar or the Rockstar Rockstar if we want to go true trophy. I like the black. We'll get this one. We've got some new designs that you can use to personalize your car. So lots of paint schemes to choose from. That's kind of cool. Nothing quite in the colors I was hoping for for me, but I'll just play a game I always do uh, when it comes to this with playing with my brother on video games. I close my eyes and stop. That's our car. Buy it. All right, let's see what it's made of. Hello, everybody joining the stream. We're just testing out career mode and multiplayer today. Yesterday we tried some single player mode to get a good feel for the physics and what the car was really made of, or the sim I should say, and now we're kind of getting into that, that stuff that makes it a, a classic arcade or simcade title. And, you know, some people call it doing the grind, working your way through the tiers, earning licenses, earning trophies, earning money, buying cars, all of that stuff when you talk about Gran Turismo or Forza. And, you know, we can argue all day long over the two titles, but let's face it, some people own a PlayStation. Some people own an Xbox. Ooh, there's a crash. We haven't had many of those, but we're going to expect them, I, I suppose. Uh, but as I was getting to is, you know, it's a, it's a, for those who don't have both consoles, it's sort of a Ford versus Chevy argument, and I think they are very comparable sims, and they both have handling properties that I like and dislike. Talking Gran Turismo versus Forza, traditionally over many generations of each title. And, you know, even when I think of the perfect sim, it's really a, a, like a piece of pie or a pizza. And I might take a slice from Forza. I might take a slice from Gran Turismo. I might take two slices from Assetto Corsa. You know, that that's how I'd build the perfect sim, would be like that. And, and you know, Forza absolutely is one of those influential sims whether you're talking arcade or sim cave. so anyway let's hope this doesn't crash on us again let's go through it saved our car that's cool whale tail you haven't missed a whole lot we did the first race of the career mode before it lets you pick Looks like it's going to lock up again. I wonder if our native video settings are the cause of this or if there's a problem with running that. So, sorry about that, guys, but that's, you know, as a reviewer, these are the kind of things I run into all the time. You'd think it's as easy as just getting in and playing, whether you're talking pre-release or even launch day release. Uh, there are problems sometimes for certain systems, certain components. You might have a wheel that's supposed to be compatible, but for some reason doesn't. Could be graphic driver issues. Could be in need of a patch. Let's face it, these games go gold, as they put it, when they actually start printing the discs or making the final version uh, readied. And, you know, it might still... They might learn a few things between that point and when it goes uh, all the way forward. Yeah, I'm on a PC. Uh, first things first, let's go back and just put our graphics to single screen for right now. I, I am more interested in showing you guys things than getting the triple screen. And that's the only change we made since yesterday that really would have made any change to things. Um, and to get back to that single player mode and go right back to the trophy truck. I want to find out if that's a little bug with that series, career mode, or was it our graphic settings? Things still spinning. We seem to be loading just fine. Before so yeah, race, uh, apparently it didn't like triple choices. screens for that you version. You change your gear, tune your car, and more. Never hurts to give everything one more look before you hit the track. I'll write myself a little note. Now, in fairness, I might await to find out if that's an issue 
they're addressing. I might go back and try triple screens later. We didn't have a problem loading the first race. Now to keep things properly matched, this race has been humble. So just a little note to myself for track meets the same standard. Whale tail, I believe way, it is just standard consumer wheels. And I'm gonna okay. test that in Everything my next set. episode. Start when but right now I don't know. I've been using the Thrustmaster wheel. It was one of their supported wheels and had a picture and everything. Um, oh, is this like the ones they run with IndyCar? Well, I mean, honestly, I'm just as excited in that for that concept. Um, so, so much for the taking it from Horizon, where you did have an awful lot of dirt driving. Now, does that mean they have the steel ramps or not? If they don't have the steel ramps, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll confess, I'm going to be a little mystified as to their purpose. I mean, I understand racing the big Euro trucks. They're set up for racing. It is slippery, really slippery in this car. You see those guys driving them sideways, lifting that inside tire. You get that kind of feel out of driving it. Like it's just the rear end is steering the car as much as the steering wheel is. No idea how much I have to slow this thing down. I'm not seeing any steel ramps, which means I am racing an off-road truck on a street course. And I'm gonna give this a big thumbs down. Uh, the truck's fine, it's not even a critique of the truck. It actually feels like it's handling on the road the way it should. Um, but why the F would I be driving this on the road? You can answer that question. I see people driving these on the road, and I'm like, man, that guy better... I used to have a, a pretty lifted truck, and I took it off-roading as much as I possibly could. But on the road, it was a stupid vehicle. Oh, into the wall. Now, I will say it's still racing. I, there's no denying that. The sloppy handling actually works as far as uh, actually giving you a little more sensation because it's so extreme. I'm not going fast, though. I'm only in 12th to 14. So, I definitely don't have a grip on driving this thing yet. Oh, made a mess of that. Um, I'm hoping that we can run more than one series at a time, because I would honestly get out of this series as soon as this race is over. And they want me to do three laps of this crap. The AI seem to be doing a lot better job with this than they did with proper cars on a wet track. We've talked about rubber band effect. It's not like they're like, hey, you suck, and they're not bringing the leaders back to me. So in career mode, it looks like you better step up your game against the AI level that you have set. I think we put it at 80% yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. All the flicking I'm doing is based on force feedback. So again, comparing it to the demo, I'm feeling a lot more force feedback than I did. Not a lot's a strong word. I'm feeling more force feedback than I was. That looked like rubber band effect. I don't think I was going any faster. I think those guys woed up a little bit for me. Use him as a moving guardrail. Thank you. One more lap. Well, when, we, when I start evaluating this on a level of an uh, arcade game, you know, the upside and downside of being properly reviewed in that fashion, well, AI has to be so much better if you're just an arcade racer or even a simcade racer. And good AI can make 
a good arcade racer one of the best driving experiences you're going to have. That's the yin and yang of the differences in having such a nice ladder variety of types of sims that we get to play and choose from. Alright, this has not been my favorite discipline, and I even still give it a boo because there are no steel ramps and I'm in a trophy truck off or on road. But uh, I, I'm definitely getting a racing. I have to get used to the car and drive it properly, regardless of the circumstances. Well, and furthermore, I'm still enjoying myself. It's not been boring. I didn't have to have, hit escape and get out of this because it was terrible. Come on, let's get a position or two. Come on. Oh. Big bump. Felt that in the wheel. He took it. He didn't just go running off crying. Gotta like that out of the AI. Whoa. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Too much gas lighting up the tires. Eight. That's a little disappointing. GTR, GTSR. I. What are you looking for out of the game? Would be the, the easiest way to answer. All right, that was pretty cool. That was definitely pretty cool. Um, I would have loved to have seen the steel ramps. That would have been way cooler. Uh, especially if they're going to put us on the street like that. You'll acquire series points. The better you finish, the more points you earn. Let's hope we can join a different series and that we're not locked into that. I hope. We earned some money. If I were to make a ladder of Sims and really historics. All right, you know what? We had a lot of fun in the historic. Let's go that. Ford introduced the Mustang. Thank you, Tom. That's a great answer right there. And with that, the car company kicked off the pony car wars. It was a battle between American manufacturers that was hotly waged in showrooms and on the track. Now you know I'm going to pick this car. I don't even have to look them over. Chevy Camaro with a big old blown out motor in it. Oh. That's like a dream for me right there. You'll be Paul, I agree with you. Race. Keep an eye out for anything that'll help you judge turns. And AJ, maybe that's the case. Maybe we shouldn't judge too early, but I'm going to go back to cars. And I had a lot of fun driving the old car yesterday. So I think we're going to just go right back to that and see how things work out. The Ladder of Sims. I need to do... I have to give a little thought to that to be perfectly fair. But right now, I would tell you that I put iRacing at the top, not on a level of sim, but on a level of competition model. Assetto Corsa, Project Cars, Automobilista, um, I, I didn't mean Project Cars, Assetto Corsa, R Factor 2, Automobilista, uh, you can put them on in a rung right there below, and then from there you get into your, your race room, and maybe Automobilista might actually be there depending on how you run it, um, and then Project Cars 2 is pretty much in that medium level. I would call it a mid-level sim slash driving racing game. Are we running the road, the oval? Yeah. Oh no, they gave me the blower. Yeah, that is a Mercury XR7. Oh, it's the road course. Oh, get your head in the game. Gotta love that sound, come on. Oh, bumping and banging in the big heavy metal body cars. You can, oh, come on, Sean, take the proper line. They hit me, so I'm gonna hit them back too, a little bit. The fun of playing an arcade game, you know what? I gotta be that aggressive driver that I can't always be in the online world. Okay, I don't know this variation of the track. That came completely unexpected. 
Oh, I thought it was a Daytona. Am I not? Yeah, this is Daytona. I just don't know this variation of the track. It's hard to see over that giant blower. Come on, Camaro! <laughs> yeah, my IR and safety radar are going to hell. Well, it's not like they just gave me this, like, lightning-fast car. I'm not making any ground here to make up for my lack of ability on the infield section. I was kind of hoping to pick up some spots on the straightaway, thinking it would give me a little advantage, perhaps, but no. So I have to admit I like that. Two-lap race, so this completion of lap one on this variation of Daytona that I don't know. Touchy braking still. You just gotta kind of create your own ABS and just kind of pump them, it seems, when you start to get too much lockup. Which, again, in an arcade ish way, is a simulation of what I really do. That's what I do with a good brake and a good sim, is I do a little auto ABS. Use him as a moving guardrail, thank you very much. I don't know about the name tags. That's a good question. There, I'm sure you can. It'll be a, they have a heads up display. I don't find it that annoying when playing this game, to be honest with you. help if I did know this variation of the track. Bump him. Go, go, Camaro, go! I guess everyone's taking the high line. A little bit of wobble. Maybe it's the 2007 variation of Daytona. Oh, ninth place. Is that right? I think it really probably depends on your settings as much as anything. I mean, Force feedback generated out of this is not super duper strong compared to a lot of other sims that you're going to play. I mean, we have it at 100%, I think, and it's doing just fine. Um, but it's giving me good, good... Yes, it is, Shabbat. All right, that was much more fun. A proper car, some good, strong AI. This is definitely not the the version of AI that we were experiencing in single player mode with so many mistakes. We'll see in the rain or if we get an event like that, but from what I've seen, I'm not seeing mistakes. They're going at a good pace, and I had to work my ass off for a ninth place finish. So that's great, and when I'm looking at that career mode and looking for that great arcade simcade type title, is it sucking me in? Do I want to run in the next race? Am I looking forward to the next series and the next class of car? Um, so far, so good. Forecast calls for rain. Best to prep for a wet track. All right, so here we're going to get to test out that wet track. I think if you're talking about force feedback on this between wheels, to an extent it's going to be splitting hairs. 
And the reason I say that again, this is not like the force feedback you get out of a Seto Corsa or even Project Cars for that matter. Um, a lot of people even argued you could run this with the controller just as just as well and, and for many, yes you can. Whoa, come on. And I put it in second gear. Oh crap. Uh, I think we put it at 8080. We can double check that. And we can also double check the gamer tags above. I don't mind that though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you. I usually try to be a little more respectful than that. So this isn't in the rain, it's just a damp day, apparently. Look, they rub themselves. That sounded funny. Kind of hard to make it past those two fighting it out. They don't have a lot of time to get it done. Look, he drove me off the track. Payback's a bitch. Look at that! I love it! Take that! <laughs> he seems to have more power than me. <laughs> yeah, in the grass for you, sucker. I believe my wheel is a little cockeyed to the right, or to the left, I'm sorry, from smashing with him. Little Pittman maneuver on him. Oh, come on, hang on. Shoot, shoot, shoot. No, 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 no. Slippery in the grass. Do a little blocking. I'll drive anything if it's fun. Wow, they are really rude, aren't they? No, 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 no. Smoking him off the corner. I am just making a mess of this one. I went into reverse. Son of a... <laughs> It's uh, 14th place of 24. So that's cool. It's a decent sized grid. Oh, he's back. No, that's a Mustang. Back to 15th place. What, are you going to block me?
driving all that well. Car models are great. I mean, even from here, it's like that is so blatantly a Mustang ahead of me. Those cones are because of me. Lighting it up off the corner almost every time. You'd expect that from this kind of horsepower and a live axle. Solid. is 14th oh that's not very good not very good all right and paddle shifters yes i agree that's pretty funny uh rick motek um this game doesn't deserve a wheel uh i disagree with that but you're welcome to your opinion i only say that because it's far more enjoyable with a wheel um, <laughs> Toretto hair. Yes! Which is funner. Um, that is a really good question. I have had a really good time against AI in career mode so far with this. I think the AI in Forza... From what I've seen on a very limited basis, this is not my review, this is my about the same amount of time with each game, or sim. Uh, the AI right now are really fun to race with. Obviously, you saw that was a boxing match, an MMA fight out there. That was not just, you know, <laughs> simple racing. I couldn't just intimidate them out of the corner. In a lot of other games, with the AI, you give them a little bump and they kind of yield way. You dive bomb them, they yield way. You saw, these guys fought me back, and if I got nasty, they were going to be nasty right back. So when I think of it being an arcade racer, <coughs> when I think about it, having this diversity, cars, tracks, career mode, weather conditions, all these great scenarios, and if that AI stays consistent throughout, it's going to really keep me having fun on the career mode and wanting to pursue other series so now p cars might offer better racing with individuals so if you're looking for that medium level i don't want to be as serious as i racing but i want to race against a really good crowd you might find but but that'll come with time um giant banana <laughs> i'm not sure what that is Someone said get voice meter banana, but I think you mean something else. Uh, would I try this with a controller? I would, but I wouldn't have as much fun. Um, yeah, you got to concentrate more. I mean, I am able to keep it on the track at some of these places I've never been because of the level of arcadeness and... and driving aids i have all driving aids turned off but there's enough built-in driving aids that it's doing everything it can to help me make the corner even if i'm a little late on turn in or a little over speed get on that brake, and it seems to give you even more braking power when you're off the line just to make sure that you can stay on the track and keep going uh project cars 2 isn't nearly as forgiving in that respect um I, th I have these guys set pretty aggressively, so, um, yeah, but bashing and bang, I don't, you know, I race in a league, and I can't just bump someone out of my way. You saw, if you watched that race last night in Sim Racing Systems in the Porsche, I had a really tight battle, and man, it would have been easy to have just bumped him off the track and, and breaking, but that's not how you get it done against human beings. And I'm not advocating such things, but let's face it, just saying enough of you and smashing them out of your way is kind of fun. So, um, collector score, so we're getting some bonuses. 
There we go. Little beetle. Yay. And we've leveled up. Looks Yay. Like got some credits to spend. Hey, why not invest in a prize crate? You might get mods, driver gear, or something else great. All right, let's get a prize crate. Apparently we have enough. Um, I don't have enough to buy that. Uh, hey, they're expensive. What's he talking about? Oh, I can buy a basic or premier. All right, just for the fun of it, we'll buy a basic just to play participate in the game. And let's open it. Oh, cancel. R to open. Drum, drum roll. Ideal conditions. Traction. Plus XP. Expert passing. Double down. Alright, so we get... Most of those look like improved race rewards. Some bonuses for performing two good passes. I'm assuming that's not slamming them out of your way. And yes, you can tune and upgrade your cars. I haven't done that yet, but we saw that. We did go look at, like, the wheels you could do. Um, and I think you can get some mods when you do those crates. Oh! I didn't even hit enter. I just hit escape, and it took us right to racing. Ooh, NOS would be a nice thing to get. Alright, I think we'll run this. It, I hope this completes our first series. And if it does, then great. If not, we might have to move on to something else. So at the start of the race, something else I think about. I'm at full throttle. And it put me in gear. As soon as it was time to go. So when you think Sim versus Arcade, that is an absolute Arcade quality right there. And if you didn't see yesterday, is when I was doing a lot of just feeling out of the cars, feeling some of the wheel weight, some of the transfer of energy with the physics, the braking, the lockup point, all of that kind of stuff. Love this group of cars. That's something else that seems to be nicely improved over single player. You could, it looked like in single player you could put any combo you want, but the default was like a weird variety of cars that you would never see on the track together. In career mode, obviously, it seems to be keeping a stricter list of cars, and, you know, these are the cars you would have seen running in the day together, and it's like, that's a beautiful thing. Should do a lot better here, I actually do know this track. don't know the braking zones and the amount of uh, cornering ability this has. I'm having a blast. I think I'm being pretty straightforward about what it feels like. I'm not trying to give it awards for the best physics on Earth or any of that kind of stuff. When you drive it like a sim, meaning you know the track. You know what an apex is. You are rewarded with much better performance out of the car. Probably didn't need to drop second there. God, I can't see over this blower.
Infernal Sean. seem to have any kind of performance advantage over anybody, but that's awesome. Final lap. Here's the other thing I'm going to say about physics. Actually, I'll let this race finish, then I'm going to tell you something. One of my thoughts when it comes to physics. Come on, Camaro! Go, go, go! much better oh it's a little under steer at times and a little over steer at other times but here's what I, I was gonna say about uh, the physics in general when you get to a game that gives you the basic proper driving things that you'd expect and you know and, and even if you're just talking about weight transfer the no dipping the nose down enough when you uh, hit the brakes and changing the weight of the car based on where you are with the throttle and gas pedal even if it's got some weird qualities. So when I think of Forza, for me, it's got this constant pendulum. You're always trying to catch the car. But given enough laps, what happens is you calibrate yourself. You learn the handling properties of the physics of the game or sim, and then you start to drive for what it needs. That's what we do as a race car driver. If they give you an open-wheel car, you test its boundaries, and you learn to drive around its faults. They give you a GT10 top car, same thing. You're going to drive it as hard as you can. You're going to find its boundaries, and then you're going to do everything to protect its faults. And I think that we do the same thing with Sims. So, I mean, at this point, I'm getting a good handle on the physics, and, and that could even cloud you to saying, oh, the physics feel great. Well, I got it to the point now where I'm really feeling how hard can I jump on the brake? How hard can I use that oversteer and throttle to steer the car and work to my advantage? I'm doing everything I can to just like if I was changing disciplines in cars, changing disciplines of sims and learning what I need to do as a driver to get the most out of it. As that's happening, I'm getting more immersed in it. I'm getting more used to the physics and it's getting more of a natural feel than when I first drove it compared to, and that's one thing I'll say about like a Seto Corsa, the minute you get in it, the force feedback are, are so natural that it, there's no learning curve. You're just on it right away. With this, it took me more time to adapt to this than a Seto Corsa, but now that I am, I'm thinking, okay, if I know the track, I should be able to finish much better than I am. So that's my little two cents on that for now. And uh, I do want to try a little multiplayer too, but I want to see where we can get this career mode. And I'll have to bring things to a halt in about 40 minutes. See you later, Splendid. It's the final race of the series. All right, here we Are go. You brought the finesse and the we fury so far. 
Now finish strong and show everyone who will be taken home yeah, before uh, to drive Mazda Raceway. I've seen these cars race at this track. All right, Tom. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do to kill a car. I will make that sacrifice in my career for you. No, but that's something I also, as a reviewer, need to know. What are the boundaries? You know, I've been running pretty clean. We saw me bounce some people. We saw me run a little clean at the last one. Now let's see what we can do about causing some mayhem. Alright, let's try this for starters. to see how the AI react. Do they just go to a stop? Which, again, when we were in single player mode, we just saw those guys come to a stop. It was kind of, it was actually kind of making me think we had a problem. So far from what I've seen, it's not a bad version of uh, Mazda Raceway at all. You heard the RPMs picking up. I felt that in the steering wheel. We just kind of muscle our way through. Oh! Uh, I didn't see that coming. Alright, let's see what kind of mayhem we can create in the corkscrew. Right suspension damaged. No roll, though. Another thing is, can we just end the day of our competition and win by that way? method? I don't see how you get this thing to roll. See how bad we can cut some corners and if we get any kind of penalties. Alright, I haven't figured out which one's my handbrake. There's a look back. That felt like handbrake. Just didn't do anything. 12 year old, yeah, exactly. didn't catch it tried I felt it bouncing the other thing we haven't tested I guess I could I do have a shifter plugged in plugged into the PC direct, not into the wheel. I'll try a little e-brake maneuver into the corkscrew and see what happens. Oh. No, not enough. Yeah, I haven't gotten a single cut now that I'm thinking about it. Not a single one. Well, that was a pretty good attempt, I think. This car is pretty heavy. It might have something to do with it, too. Alright, let's finish this and we'll be done with this section of our career mode. And we can see how it taunts us 
or invites us into the next? Is it like dry? Like, okay, pick another one? Or is it like, hey, you're awesome, do more? I like that. That's real. More forgiving than Project Cars, but not just a total arcade game either. Blow a motor? This is about as sloppy as you're ever going to see me drive. I just love that noise. All right, let's see if we can carry uh, a little more speed into the corkscrew and see what we can do. Oh no, we're in 23rd place. I'm guessing 24th is the guy we took out royally somehow. Nope, pretty much the same result. Oh, almost. Gotta like the tires kicking off the wall. I mean, that's that's a quality effect you're not gonna see in every sim. Oh no, that's 24th place. We're 24th. Proper Sims, we do that every day. I'm getting the impression you really don't like this, Gio. I'm getting the distinct impression that you're not impressed with Forza 7. <laughs> Thank you, Aeons. I and, and and I mean, for any product I get into, I, I honestly feel that you have to look at its intended audience, not what everybody. I, I mean, I'm I, me as a sim racer. Maybe I have my own personal opinion on what I want out of the ultimate sim, but I don't think this was made for me or that guy. So I need to review it from the perspective of who. It's really marketed to and designed for. You made and, it. You finished and the And when first I think series. of it in that way, now you can take on the next step in the it's, Forza Drivers it's, Cup. It's a good game. I mean, I can't, I can't say it's not. I'm having a lot of fun. You're, you're seeing smiles on my face. They're genuine as can be. That's why I want to do the review live. Also, it's a slightly different feel than the buttoned-up show where you're, you know, you, even though I tell you my same opinion, maybe it, it means more coming in this format. I agree, Tom. And the other thing is for me, just like, you know, I, and, and this is a point that, that I've made a few times. As a hardcore sim racer, even a sim racing elitist at times, I can tell you that I depend on this game and Gran Turismo for the future of what I want to do. And if I want more game prize, more competition, better sims at the top of the board, it's going to come from having more sim racers. Without Gran Turismo, without Forza, without Project Cars, F1 2017, even Mario Kart, we are never going to get those future Gregor Hutus or Martin Kronkies or, you know, Rudy Van Buren's or these guys who are going to win the big money and be the sim racing heroes of tomorrow. 
And that is where I look at it from where I sit in the industry. And I want the growth of our industry. And this is one of the most important games. It's going to be the second highest selling game of the year as far as driving titles go. And it is very important that the people who drive it have enough fun to actually explore Race Room, R Factor, Assetto Corsa, Project Cars, etc. Um, when I'm looking at it from that perspective, if that guy gets this and is he having fun like I am, because maybe he will do a search for sim racing on the Google or YouTube, you know, whatever, and, and find, wow, I'm just touching the surface of sim racing. So that's my take on it. Here's part of that bringing you in. What does it do right now is really important to me. No commentary. I'd like some explosions, some celebrations. I guess we didn't get on that podium. Um, Showcases are the I don't disagree with you as far as it being... Cars. Uh, these rides will definitely improve what it is. Score. It is an arcader. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. I don't, I don't even disagree with you guys. I'm just looking at it from a different set of eyes, I think. Um, and, and totally in agreement with you. Um, and I am enjoying myself. So, um... All right, so, if you were playing it, you'd rather be on a controller. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't agree with that, but I see your point, if that makes sense. Okay, we have opened up new territories. So we've got to that upper echelon of our series. Let's try out the Audis. What's better? We'll do one more event, just to ones. try another car, then we'll huh, go to online and do some question. multiplayer. You'll get seated in a rocket. Of Am a I okay? What do you mean, K Stoney? I'm doing great. Siblings. Now they get a head start, and you'll need to overtake them and win before you run out of track. Think of it as a friendly family rivalry with engines. I agree, AJ. Acceleration is definitely number one. Cornering is number two. Braking is number three. Top speed, although it's cool, it's not so important. So I've got that as number four. But for me, it's all about acceleration and cornering. Hey, Sir Sugar, that's pretty funny. Limo bowling? I missed that. All right, Tom, we'll jump over to that as well. Okay, so this is one of those pursuit ones, but look at the competition. Not quite the same as what we had in that previous, but we have a completely different discipline. So we talk about that fun factor, you know, sucking you into the game. I dig this. This is cool. And it didn't take long for me to figure out what my goal was, which is hunt down these guys, basically. Where are we at? We're at Brand's hat, right? I mean, I'm in a race-prepped Audi. Talk about arcadey features. I have a map down there. Center pillar is really in my way. <laughs> Had to do a little cheating. There we go. Yeah, the, the bar, that crossbar in the window was horrible. 
All right, we're going to get out of that. That was fun. That was cool. Now you've seen another discipline. I like that. That's sort of that scenario we've seen on uh, YouTube videos with the Formula One car versus, like, the drift car versus, like, the sedan with a different timed... Uh, you know, they kind of knew the lap times in advance and they'd stage them. So they should all finish the finish line. I always am interested in to see the difference in car types and how they really move on the track together. So that's cool. That was fun. I would do more of that happily. Nice right. work. This car is now yours. Yeah. Now you can pull it out of the garage and race it whenever you want. Keep an eye out for more showcases. They're the best way to collect cars you won't find anywhere else. All right. Gosh, we're not even going to get to multiplayer today. Get uh, oh, we wanted to do bowling. Sorry, that's what we were doing. Limo bowling. Cases will be unlocked as you race. Now, it's your car bowling is proof a car can make anything better. Instead of rolling a ball. Oh, ball, pro sim here, pins. here towards the end. We have about twenty minutes Pretty left. Placing the knockdown pin set up for you along the track. Oh, this makes me it's laugh a already. Way to practice drifting and sliding. Better than trucks yeah, on a uh, I'm pretty good at for two reasons. Number road one, course. I've done a lot of dumb stuff in a car in my life. Number two, I took bowling as a class in This college. is Rutledge so Wood talking. It's just like when you see a professional bowler, it's all about the spin. You gotta get in there and you gotta make that car. Oh come on. I you guys who don't like this, you, you tell me this doesn't actually bring a slight smile to your face. Not even just a little hint of a smile. <laughs> fun. I'm not going to say I'm not. I remember this event, though. We've seen this before, actually. <laughs> this is funny. Ah! Yeah, do they have it uh, where you need to go reverse? Do that, like, presidential limo driving training? All right, that was cool. And... Get out of here. All right, let's go do one multiplayer race at least. We promised it, so let's see how it works. One more stuff. I mean, pretty much every time we do something, we win more stuff. Sometimes better than others. And let's go to multiplayer. This one seems very quiet. hear this, see it, I want to move on. This 
So I have had fun. I'm, I'm not going to deny that it hasn't been fun. Yes, I am ProSim. I have it running two web cameras, a broadcast studio, and the game all at the same time. And in addition to that, a chat program that rebroadcasts the chat. So... Rise of the Supercar, joining Lobby. Um, my name's show, I believe I'm Sean underscore Simpit, if I'm not mistaken. Or Simpit Sean, that's it. Yeah, so everyone's gonna see Simpit Sean. It joined pretty quickly. Should we take that? Is that a BMW or a Pantera? I think that's a BMW. Kind of two cars you wouldn't think you'd confuse. I'm just gonna take the car. Yeah, it's the BMW. I'll just rent the car. And I'm ready. Alright, so what do we need to do? Looks like people might be hearing me. I'm not hearing anybody. Uh, Rstream, I believe it's called. I found a video on YouTube on how to add Rstream. I was using a different embedded chat and it broke. So I decided that I would... Look, I already selected my car. Bear with me one second. I'm not doing anything, I'm just gonna go. How do I get in the car? <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I'm going to keep a little more incognito. Whoops. Four seconds launch countdown. Maybe that's what it was waiting for. Last chance for me to load up any car changes I wanted, mods, setups, any of that kind of stuff. 11 to 24 drivers in the room. I play almost every sim on triples, normally. Uh, every sim, really. Sometimes I have to put it in a single screen mode just to be able to uh, broadcast it for the show. They might be hearing what I'm talking about because I'm, I see my microphone moving, but then it doesn't always move. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Exactly. Six o'clock tonight, we'll be running that. All right. Sonoma? Well, a little oversteery there on throttle, that's for sure. Feel a little outgunned with those Ferraris. Definitely a more of a handful than anything else I've driven. That guy in the yellow Lambo is smoking us. Oh, it's that one. Wasn't sure which down ramp. This car is a nightmare. 
Oh, someone smashed the hell out of me. Take that, smashers. This thing is sloppy all over. Tell you what, I might not be the fastest guy in the room, but just driving clean is gonna get you somewhere in uh, multiplayer. I know we're only in third and got guys right behind us so we're not out of the woodwork yet. But almost a perfect setup for a drift through the chicane. Car does a four. Oh, come on! Cameraed by everyone, son of a you know what, all the way back to seventh. Unacceptable. Getting beat up by the multiplayer world. Oh, now come on! Now that's the kind of shit that honestly, why. I wouldn't even want to play this in the multiplayer world because of that. I mean, it's like there's bumping and contact and then there's literally just like, Hey, I'm an idiot. I have no freaking clue what I'm doing. Now, I know people who've run in forts of leagues where you run on a, you know, invite-only room. And, you know, I, I will say that running this in a group of people who knew what they are doing and were prepared for the event would be a real pleasure. Ah, oh, come on. So that's again why you get into that the difference between the sim versus arcade oh I missed that corner that's what those guys who got by me did ah oh, come on Cole not paying attention nice looking version of Sonoma I like the dirt on the windshield you guys see that yeah I don't mind any bumping and banging that's to be expected but and they just torpedo you in the corner, and it's like, okay, you're obviously here to disrupt things more. What do you know? Same fucking idiot. I guess 
that's my fault for letting him near me. never called anyone out, but you're an idiot. Oh, suddenly now he can drive properly, huh? I can't get that corner down at all. This car is a piece of junk. <laughs> hi, Max. If people are saying hi to you. Right there, actually being quiet today. All right, well, I will say that even though that was mayhem, uh, I mean, there's no consequences, so does it matter? Uh, look at that car, what a mess. So, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, even again, using that fun factor. Is it worth it? Do you want to do it anyway? Uh, you know, I'd still get back and do another race. I mean, it's it's just a big deal, you know? And you saw that guy in that yellow Lambo. If I had had more pace, that guy would have never been in a position to hit me outside of the first moments of the race. So, you know, that guy, ACR Wob, I mean, that guy was flying. I'd have liked to have been up there running with him. Now, that looks like quite a bit more car than an BMW M1. So, um, let's go ahead and get out of here because I am about all done at this point. I didn't want to give that a shot. Um, we could go try a different discipline if we wanted, but that'll take us over time. And yesterday I went over time and it actually caused me a little difficulty. And I do have another stream coming later today. So I think we're going to call it. I will go look for that track scenario. You asked about C Peng. Let's go ahead and take a, a look at the tracks just so we can see that. We, we've looked at the diversity cars a little bit. So if I go to single player free play, um, it was. Well, it did make it kind of hard to find things here. That was one thing I did notice. Race setup, that's where it is. Not where you'd expect the track to be. Um, Homestead, Le Mans, they're not in alphabetical order. So we're just looking, Yaz Marina, oh that's cool, I wanna try that in a Formula One-ish car. So going through, you guys kinda look with me, Rio and Prague, wow. There's some cool tracks here that I gotta try out. Tracks I've actually never driven. Bernese Alps. Are... Nope, it looks like no Sir Pang. C Pang. Um, and Pillow Cun. Yeah, I agree. In, in the good circumstances of the good race, I'll take humans over AI any day. Um, but at the same time. The AI in, in single player, so far, the AI in single player has been better than I would have expected and is actually something that I would put on my pro list so far in testing. And I'd be, I'd be really giving them a pat on the back for some fun to drive against AI. They, they take it seriously. They race you hard. Um, you know, and, and they're, they can't just be bumped out of the way and give up, which I see in so many, in a, in so many driving games are guilty of that problem, where they, they just, the, the AI will not race you, will not fight you, and, and at 80% and 80% aggression, I'm, I'm finding them very enjoyable to race with, and, and very competitive, so, uh, anyway, that is gonna do it for today's stream, I don't think I'm done with Forza 7 yet. So for me, um, truth, I will write that down. It's something I've considered. Um, isn't that best done with VR? I'll get my hands on a set of VR if I need to. Um, mechanic. I've seen that game and I was kind of ex inspired. So we, we can check that out. And Michael, you mean on GTR 3? No, I've still not heard anything on that level. Um, 
Yeah, Todd. So if you're aggressive, they're going to get aggressive. Okay, question mark. I'm writing down some notes from you guys. Thank you very much. And... Um, yeah, I'll definitely look into that car mechanic simulator. It, I, I, it looked like you could build the whole car up almost. So that looked like a lot of fun. Um, anyway, uh... That is going to do it for today's stream. I, I think I am going to come back and, and maybe we'll do a stream where we, we try out the Fanatic wheel and I'll just verify the direct drive wheel. Maybe I'll put that on on my own time, see if it works, and if it does, then we'll start that show off. If it doesn't, then I'll just start with the Fanatic wheel and let you know that the direct drive did or did not, in fact, work. Um, so, anyway, I, I, yeah, thank you, Paul. I had a blast. I mean, I have to be honest with you. I've, I've had a lot of fun. We, we've talked about the good and the bad and, and the bottom line for this sim or game. And, and with all that said, I've had a really good time and I've enjoyed myself. And I, I, I do that in all, all sincerity because, again, it just brought a smile to my face and it made me want to continue on. And I think for me, there'll be an end of the ride in terms of when I'm still having fun and going through the grind. But I think that for those who don't find real sim racing, that that grind might take them all the way to the end of this game, which is very, very deep from what it looks like. Five different tiers. We still haven't finished tier one or even close to it. So um, anyway, I, I'm overall, I'm fairly impressed with Forza, despite all the flaws that we can point fingers and talk about. But even with those taken into consideration, it's still, uh, I think, worth the money. I think that if you understand what it is, you want to see the cars, you want to do the auto vista, you want to drive them, it's hard to argue the, the price for the game uh, as long as you take all that into consideration on your own as well. I will do another show. I will probably do a review, and we will be back tonight at 6 o'clock for a Sim Racing Systems Porsche Carrera Cup race. That'll be the final race of this week, and this is week five. So one more week to go, and then we'll be starting a new se season. You can check out the stream of the race at YouTube, but do even better, get involved in the racing. Go to Sim Racing System. If you have a Seto Corsa, you have the Porsche Pack 1, then you've got everything you need to be. It's all free once you have those two pieces of content, the game and the DLC. You can join the racing for us as well. So... Um, thank you, Dodd, Todd, for the mention there. Yeah, absolutely. Share this video. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Do everything you can do to help us grow the channel so we can bring you more and more content. And when I say we, I think the more help we get, the more we'll be able to crank things out. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being part of the pit crew and part of the channel and part of what makes it so much fun for me to do. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole. I'll see you on the track.